Hey guys, um, this is Krista, and I'm going to uh, be explaining to some things about college to y'all. Um, so, I am a freshman in college, and I just declared my major as bachelor, bachelor's in science and nursing when you are in, and I am... Yes, I am very excited. I'm also very, very nervous, but um, I'm just going to give you guys some advice on how to balance out your schedule-wise, especially because you're going to have to have a lot of money. Um, I know for this college I'm going to, it uh, to get into the program after you take your pre pre prerequisite classes and your co-requisite co-requisite classes and then you get to the, about the end of your sophomore year you will start uh, applying for your uh, to get into the B BSN program um the from from my school I mean it might be different somewhere else but from my school it's thirty something thousand dollars which is a whole lot of money a whole lot, and you're going to, you're going to want a good job that pays good. You you're going to want, you know, really. Tell you the truth, I really hope I'm married by that time, because I can have a little extra boost. But anyway, um, I want to explain to you guys how to balance a schedule out every day. And especially this, I, I'm, I plan on doing housing, but being in a dorm and having my own room, or not my own room, but a room with somebody else. And I'm going to show you guys how to do it. So, here we go. I'm sorry if I look all, like, uh, spaced out. I've been up since about five something this morning, so. Pardon my, part of my job. Okay, this right here is my schedule. Um. Okay, so uh, so there's so many things you, you can do with your schedules. So I'm taking some uh, college writing classes, um, a reading class, a history class, and a beginning algebra class. And so with all these, you got to learn how to, you know, they're, they're not going to be in the same day. Like, okay, my beginning algebra class is from 8 o'clock a.m. until 8.50 a.m., Monday, Wednesday, Friday. My United States history class is, like, uh, my United States history, history class is on Monday, but it's from 5.25 p.m. until 8.15 p.m., so it's almost a three-hour class, but it's only one day a week. Um, all right. My reading class is Tuesdays and Thursdays, and it's 11 p or 11 a.m. until 12:15 p.m. And my my college writing class is from 12 p.m. until 12:50 p.m. So it's you know most of them are except for the re except for the history class they're three hours. So I'm going to show you guys what I what I have made out for myself and you can take the tips and do it for yourself for your college classes. Alright, this is my class schedule, my schedule that I made out. Um, as you can see right here um, I have I don't know, right here actually okay, I have a thing it says Monday 6.30 Wake up. 7.15. Breakfast. 7.40 to 8.50. I go to algebra. 9 o'clock to 11 o'clock. I study. 11 o'clock. Lunch. 11.30 a.m. to 12.50 p.m. I have a... Uh, I think that's my reading class. Well, that's my writing class. Excuse me. Okay. Yeah, that's my writing class. And then from 1 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. I'm going to rest. 
3.30 p.m. Yeah, I'm gonna write 11 in, uh, from 1 p.m. to 30, 3.30 p.m. I'm gonna rest. 3.30 p.m. to 5 p.m. Study. 5.25 to p.m. to 8.15 p.m. I have a class and uh, that three hour class for history and so that's for Monday and that's also going to be the same schedule except for the night class uh, on Wednesday and Friday too except um, the read the last reading class is you know it's um, it's a three hour class uh, it's only on Monday so I won't have to take it so I'll have you know extra whole day like you know, the whole day to study and, you know, hang out with friends and do whatever I please because I don't think I'm going to be working that day. So, I'm going get to get caught on, caught up in some income stuff and all that. Uh, so, um, so your, your main priority for creating a schedule for yourself, not a class schedule. You'll do that at your orientation for your college, but um, create one for yourself. Like, what time am I going to get up? What time am I going to study? How many hours am I going to study? Uh, what work do I need to do? That's a whole other thing that I'm going to get to later, but um, your main focus is to make sure, make sure that um, Especially with your classes. I know for me, August 10th, by August 10th, I have to have uh, my all my stuff up to date and all paid for $2,573. Yeah, it's, it's expensive for your first semester. And that's not even including housing. It's going to be, a, I would think, an additional 4000 something for housing. But, so, we're just going to have to try to calculate that up into it, but. Anyway, um, hopefully my FAFSA, but anyway, thing, hopefully it'll pay for it, but the main thing is focus. I want to give you guys some information about how to, how to apply for some colleges and what you need to do. Now, if you're like a seventh grader watching this video or a sixth grader, I suggest you go to another video because I mean I mean, I'm the type of person that you are. I mean, if you're watching this video like six years in advance, I'm the type of person to plan things out, to write it all down and plan it out twenty million space years later, you know, or earlier. And that's, I mean, that's how I've been, you know, pretty much all my life. And so, when you're doing all this, try to incorporate a thing for yourself. Try to do a, um, you know, like a, a FAFSA. Fill out the FAFSA. It's very important. Very, very, very important. That's a, that's, that's how you will know if you get Pell Grants or not. Um, fill out that. Fill out your FAFSA. Fill out your state, um, fill out your state scholarship stuff, and make sure you look and make sure you have all the required paperwork for all of this. Because I'm going through some issues right now with mine. Just be sure to get everything you have in at the right time, and you'll be good. Get it all in at the right time, everything should be taken care of. Um, now, now applying, uh, uh, filling out applications. That's the that's the big deal right there. Okay, yeah, some people they will live in Arkansas, which um, you know they live in Arkansas. Um, people want to fill out an application for Harvard University or Phoenix or. College overseas. No, that's okay. I mean, if you want to do that, that's fine. You know, I mean, you know, but make sure you are not saying, "Oh, I'm going to move to New Jersey. I'm going to move he Phoenix." 
make sure you have things planned out there first. Especially make sure you have everything planned out there, planned out there like you need it. And so, like if you're trying to try to get everything together, I would I would suggest. Because my grandpa would not let me get a job until after I graduated. So I'm still working on trying to get a good job settled for myself. And um, so it's really hard. Especially, you know, right after graduation. Right after graduation, you're, you know, trying to apply. And it's difficult. Pretty di very difficult to try to get a job right after graduation. Because everybody's trying to apply at the same time for a job. So... But try to try to apply as early as you can. I mean, you know, even tenth grade year, you can start working. Especially where I where I where I am, which is in uh, south part of the United States. I well, I ain't gonna say the state, but then again, uh, I'm over there. But uh, you can be 14 and work with the workers permit. I'm not sure. If, I'm not sure if it's the same in all 50 states, but you can be 14 and work with a workers permit and I suggest if you can, if you want to, then work that early. You know, it's good to try to get a good credit for yourself and get establish a good, you know, income for yourself while you're in college because it's very important. Um you know, if you do a minimum amount or a, a minimum amount of um job, you know, a minimum wage job, you're going to get quite a bit on FAFSA, um, maybe five, four, five, five thousand somewhat dollars, you're going to get about that much, you might even get six thousand. Uh, how the FAFSA works is if you are in a guardianship or you're adopted, I think if you're adopted you have to put your parents' tax or your adopted parents' tax returns. But if you are in a guardianship, you do not have to provide your parents' information. Whoever has guardianship of you, then that's who you put on your household verification list. So, say your grandma and grandpa uh, have, have guardianship of you. You do not have to put your mom and dad's information on there or any financial information. You're automatically, you're automatically just saying, saying, I am in a guardianship, so I am independent. So that means that you get the, the highest amount of financial aid, which is $6,000, which is a whole lot. I mean, you know, uh, that will pay for, that's a year, so that would pay a good chunk amount of, of, um, uh, payments and you know arrangements you made and there's other things that you know can kind of count with it or count against it too and I don't like the FAFSA <laughs> I do not like the FAFSA but try to try to uh, really fill it out and try to get it alright scholarships apply for many scholarships as you can I promise you try to do it I mean <laughs> You're, you're going to regret it if you don't. Um, I applied for three, I think, three or four, and I have been accepted for all three or four of them. Well, I got federal aid through the Pell Grant. I got, um, I think I got like close to $6,000 Pell, Pell Grant, but um, it was for other reasons, but uh, $6,000 Pell Grant, but um, Try to work around a thing to try to get to try to figure out where where you're gonna get all your information from. But um, yeah, a secure, a very you know, very very good amount of money is six thousand dollars a semester because normally or a year I meant I'm sorry, but um, you get two thousand dollars plus oh, excuse me. Plus about you know five hundred dollars added to that, which is about two thousand five seventy three, like I said. Um, you can add um, another part to it, and then you know, and then I'll be okay if it all adds together. So there's so many things you can do with it, and it, it it'll take a while. It really will. It will really take a while. Um. So. There's you know, lots of things that 
goes goes before it and um just apply for a college that you know you want to go to that and that you know that you really want to be at um and if you're going somewhere where it's far far away make sure you know that you have a place to stay if you don't have a place to stay and they offer housing or a dorm stay there but make sure you have the financial aid to cover it because a double room double dorm room where I am going to college at is two thousand three hundred and sixty four dollars a semester and it's like it's additional thousand six thousand six hundred and something for the meal plan which is not included in the in the um, prices for the dorm which is I find ridiculous but it's not so that's gonna be about four thousand some odd dollars for room and food and so once you add all that up it you know it, it adds big time Excuse me. And then so when you're you know trying to get all this stuff together, look at look at I in my opinion I find it's the highest goal. Make sure you write down your prices for everything. Everything. I don't care what it is, I don't care how hard it's gonna be. Make sure you uh, get a good, good, good list of things that you wanna do and the things you wanna work at. Um I am not certified in certified in, in nurses aid. I am a nurses a nurses aid, not a certified nurses aid, because I completed 91 hours of training to get you know with my training. So um, I can work 11 hour or 11 hour or 11 dollars an hour for 12 hours, and that'll put me about a thousand. Forty something dollars after taxes take out, but it's it's pretty pretty good money. It's it's really good money. I'm really praying I get it. But try to make sure that you establish a good 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 college. Uh, some college that's got what you want. Um, and especially if you go to the high a high school that's really big and you know that has a good that had a good program with a. Uh, Excuse me. And then I have a you know a good college that you know has very good. Um, you went to a high school that had concurrent classes. And if you did a lot of that concurrent classes, you're already past your freshman year. You're already in like going toward your sophomore year, which I wish I was. But you know, mistakes, mistakes. You know, we everybody makes them. But um, just try to. Really look into your options. Talk to your counselors. Don't be afraid to talk to them. Talk to them. To them. That's what they're here for, or that's what they're there for to, to help you out. Um, try to try to talk to them. Um, excuse me. And uh, try to um, talk to your professors. It's very important to talk to your professors. That way, you know exactly what he expects of you. He'll give you a course syllabus within the first day of school. All of us been through that. Here's a course syllabus and like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go, let's go. Let's get out of here. But um that's the course syllabus and he'll tell you all, all his expectations and the books that's required and just pretty much everything in general that you're gonna have to have. And so um that's about what you're gonna need. So you know, just try to try to balance out your schedule. Pick a good scholarship, you know, to apply for. If you get awarded, make sure you let your financial aid know. Which um, they don't know. If you when you when you apply for a scholarship, they'll ask you to put your college name on there. Your your list of your college that you plan on going to, and they'll send it to right to, right to that college. Um, excuse me. And so, try to take you know just about everything you can. You know, don't overpower yourself because for our degree, if we fail um, a class two times, 
then we do not get to apply for that specific program. And it's really sad because <laughs> you know, I gotta make sure I do it really good, which I don't think I've ever failed this class more than two times. I have I have failed a class um I have failed a class like you know, took it one time to fail, then took it again and passed, but never took it like three times and failed but I don't even want to know what I don't even want to know what happened what happens there. So, but um, just make sure you take care of your stuff. Make sure you get everything. There's deadlines for everything for all the factors and the scholarships. Make sure you reach them. Make sure you get them. And um, I'll be doing another video shortly because I'm really kind of zoned. Like I'm not. Uh, I'm really zoned out right now, but. I'll try to do a better one, a better video later, but try to do a, you know, try to really think about, especially if you're a junior going into senior year, or especially if you're a sophomore going into your junior year. Your your junior year of high school is very important. You make sure you make good grades, you fill out your scholarships, you get all the credits if you, your school offers college credits. Um, I know the school, what's the college I'm going to right now, they had a program for the whole area where you could do free free college and didn't have to pay one bit of it. I didn't have to pay anything for any of it. And it was awesome. And, you know, I got a little bit of college credit, maybe like nine, nine college credits. So it was really, really, really helpful. But... <sighs> So, so now, um, excuse me, so just try to think about what you, what you want to major in, but, like, don't really think about it right now. Most people don't even make their mind up until, like, three or four years in, so I want to do this, and, but make sure you make it early, early enough so you know exactly what you want, wanting to do. And I will make a video about senior year of your high school. And I'm going to put some a little more emphasis on the right now schedule and um, figuring out your income and all that. And I'll give you a website for figuring out your 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 taxes, how much you're going to have taken out of your taxes. So um, hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions, be be sure to comment below and I will try to do my best to my very best to help you out and please subscribe to my channel um please subscribe to Soprano Girl Forever that's what my that's my account number Soprano One Forever and why and try to you know try to do it right now click that button anyway so just try to and I will give y'all guys some updates on, you know, after my passport gets all settled out and, and I'll let you know how my classes are. So I hope you guys have a great day and I will talk to you guys real soon. Bye. God bless.